assume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although, although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by, by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great force to set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man. But no man can tame the tongue. It is restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives, or a grapevine bear frig, figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. You know, I, I read a cute little story that another pastor did, but he said, uh, he said one Sunday morning, the preacher was on fire. And he was preaching one Sunday morning. And the first thing he did was he condemned the sin of stealing. And two ladies yelled out, preach on, Pastor, preach on, amen. Then he condemned sexual immorality. Two ladies yelled out again, said, amen, Pastor, just keep on preaching. He condemned murder, and the two ladies kept yelling, preach on, keep preaching, Pastor. Then he condemned the sin of gossip, and everybody got quiet. And one of the ladies leaned over to the other one and said, now he doesn't quit preaching, and he's just meddling in our business. <laughs> Anyway, I, I really urge y'all to go watch that little clip of Billy Graham because I, I completely agree with his stance. He said it's one of the worst of all sins because it hurts a person and kills them over and over and over. You know, and, and Colton, and Colton and Amber could both tell you that if someone starts gossiping around me, I will literally turn around and walk off. I know it's rude, but I just don't want to hear it. And if someone gossips about me, y'all know I'm good. Remember that movie, Monty Walsh? He loves needling people. I know it's a bad habit, but if someone comes and that guy was gossiping about you, I'll pick up the phone. Hey, how's it going? Guess what I heard? They start speaking Swahili. <laughs> I know it's bad. But you know, if you look up what gossip really is, and we're going to talk about a couple different points. I looked up the definition this week. Conversation reports about others, typically involving details that are not confirmed as being true. Someone wrote this, and I like this. Another pastor had written this. The gossip is a person who will talk about others with you and talk about you when you aren't there. But really, I wanted to go to the Word of God. The first thing I did was go to the Word of God after I watched Billy Graham's sermon on it. And I read this in Ephesians 4.31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Proverbs 17.4. An evildoer listens to wicked lips. A liar pays attention to a destructive tongue. Proverbs 26.20. Without wood, a fire goes out. Without a gossip, a quarrel dies down. Proverbs 16, 28, a perverse person stirs up conflict, and a gossip separates close friends. Proverbs 11, 13, a gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. Proverbs 10, 18, whoever conceals hatreds with lying lips and spreads slander is a fool. That's what Billy Graham preached on was that scripture text. I believe that really when it comes down to it, gossip is saying something, whether it's true or not, 
with the intent of hurting someone. I believe gossip is the intent to hurt or blemish others. <coughs> if, as Christians, we are supposed to be in the image of Christ, and we are, then everything that we do and say should come out of a position of love. Think about that. That everything we do and say should come out of a position of love. We should run it through, we should run what we're going to say through the test or the filter of love. Recent Bible study I was reading, I thought that made a lot of sense. Whatever comes out of our mouth needs to run through the filter of love. Is what I'm about to say out of love? Because if it doesn't pass the God test, then it has to be from Satan. It's from old slick. If you go back to the third chapter of James that I just wrote, James said that no one could tame the tongue. Now, he's exaggerating. He is exaggerating a little bit, but he did it on purpose. The point was, the world can easily shape our thoughts. And we know about that because Paul tells us about we need to renew our mind, the renewing of our mind, because the world shapes our mind. But he's saying, he's exaggerating, saying that no one can tame their tongue. Well, it's because, he says that because the world loves gossip. The world loves gossip because it's juicy, because it, it hurts people, because it causes division. So if something causes hurt and division, then who's it from? It's from old slick, because old slick, Satan, is the author of pain, suffering, and division. Old slick knows that our tongue, our words, have power. And they do, right? When I listened to Billy Graham when he was preaching, I heard a powerful message on the Word of God. Our words also have the ability to hurt others. Our words have the ability to demoralize others. Our words have the ability to destroy others. And Satan knows that lying words and gossip have ruined a lot of good people. Nowhere in the Word of God did I ever find praise for hurting others or acting out of love. Something I thought about the other day when I was working on our sermon and prayerfully considering it is when I'm out working in the oil field, or like this week I was working on some hay equipment, I get grease all over my shirt and I get it all over my jeans. And no matter how hard I try, maybe, ladies, I need to get some advice on how to wash better so I don't throw the greasy clothes in with the whites. But no matter how hard I try to get the stains out of the clothes, I can't. So I just have to put on clean clothes if I want to look decent. But here's the deal. When you stain somebody else's character with gossip, they can't just go change their clothes. And that's what Satan wants. In James 3.6, remember it says the tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the body parts. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself on fire by hell. That is pretty strong. That's one that really steps on toes. I read this in Hebrews, and this is why you know, the Word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. And sometimes it does cut to the core. Remember Hebrews 4.12, for the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than a double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit. Joints and marrow, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. That hit home when I was writing the sermon, what James 3.6 said. And itself set on fire by hell. James also said this in the 8th verse, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is restless, evil, and full of deadly poison. Full of deadly poison is what it said in the book of James. Poison can affect your whole body. You know, if you drink something poisonous, it makes your whole system feel bad. If you get bit by a venomous snake, and I've seen this happen to people, it can affect their whole body, it can affect their heart. Poison kills and destroys. And have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed this? I've noticed this about folks. A gossip 
can look past a hundred wonderful qual godly qualities in a person just looking for one little morsel that they can spread their life about. And many times they hope that that one little thing will overshadow all the good. And if they can't find it, they'll just make it up. Which, y'all know my joke about Gainesville. If we don't know your business, we'll make it up. <laughs> well, hopefully it's not me when we do. But plain and simple, gossip is the work of the devil. Period. Because there's nothing in the Word of God that tells us to put others down, to talk badly about others, or to stop tarnish and, and hurt others. Now, I was asked to preach on gospel, and I believe I, I spent enough time kind of beating this up, because y'all know I'm not a, a, beat, a beaten up type pastor when I start preaching. Because God called me to preach on what we are supposed to be doing with our lives, how we are supposed to live, and how we're supposed to love others. And in James... Three in the 12th verse, it says, My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can salt spring produce fresh water. How do we praise the Lord with our mouth with fresh water, and then turn around and let salt water come out when we talk bad about others? What that speaks to me is as Christians, we should be producing God fruit. Like I talked about a few weeks ago, the fruit of the Spirit. What comes out of our mouth should not be contrary to who God has called us to be. Think about that. What comes out of your mouth should not be contrary to who God has called you to be. Fresh water, life-saving water, life-giving water is what should be in our conversation, not salt water. Our mouth should be producing the fruit of the Spirit, not rotten fruit thorns says this, the Word of God says this in Matthew 7, 16, by their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Now think about that. If y'all were to catch me at Atwoods one day or something like that, and I'm preaching about loving others, doing for others and all that, and the first thing coming up, boy, did y'all hear about old sons? You're talking about right. Ooh, bless her heart. No. The fruit as Christians, we should be producing the fruit of the Spirit. I read this a few weeks ago in Galatians, but you remember, the fruit of the Spirit is love. And we can just stop right there. Everything we as Christians do should be motivated by love. Our motivation for doing anything should be out of love. But God took it a step further. Joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such other things there is no law. Jesus went on to say this in John 13, 35. By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. You see, when you love others, when you are serving God, you want to encourage others. Because encouraging others is building others up in their faith. Thessalonians 5.11 Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as you are doing. You see, we are to encourage and build others up in their faith. That is what God calls us to do. That's what the Word of God tells us to do. And we can't build others up if we're trying to hurt them for whatever motive we have. It says this, remember, lifting others up in Hebrews 10, 24. Y'all know one of my favorite verses. Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Spurring one another on. Encouraging others. In Romans 12, 10, it says, Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. It's about letting who you have become and who you are becoming in Jesus Christ move you to serve and encourage others by speaking positivity into their lives. By speaking positivity into their lives. It's about allowing... Jesus to work through you to the benefit of others. 
Think about that. Allowing Jesus to work through you <clears throat> to the benefit of others. You see, true Christian love is seen when you encourage others. When you build others up. When you build others up in their faith. As Christians, we need to commit ourselves to serving and helping and encouraging others. To lifting them up. To extending the love of Jesus Christ to them. Everybody knows we all need encouragement at different times. You know, the last thing that anybody wants when they're struggling is to be looked down on, criticized, lied about, gossiped about, or have rumors started. Amen? Amen. Does anybody here enjoy someone talking about it? No. You know, only God is in the position to look down on someone. Think about it. Only God is in the position to look down on someone. But what does God do? What does God in all of his perfection do? God loves. That's what God does. God lifts up. God reaches down and lifts up. He doesn't kick somebody when they're down. He lifts them up when they're down. God encourages. God transforms. He heals. He, powers. he empowers. He produces victory. As Christians, we need to understand that God did command us to love one another. Jesus said it was the second most important thing. Love God with all of your heart, all your mind, and all your soul, and to love others like yourself. We should want to encourage others, to build others up. And the motivation to do it, what should motivate us to do it, is love. Love is what should motivate us to think of others like ourselves, to build others up. Using the same kind of love that Jesus showed when he came here and went to the cross for people that didn't deserve it. Jesus could have stood there next to God and said, oh, look at that rascal down there. No, don't want to go to the cross for him. I heard about what he did. No, sacrificial love. Perfect love. 1 Peter 4, and above all, love each other deeply because love cover, covers a multitude of sins. Proverbs 10, 12, hatred stirs up dissension. But love covers up all wrongs. You see, the Christian life, it is more than just winning souls. And praise God, we win souls and we bring people to the Lord. But it's also about loving and nurturing others. Christianity is about picking others up and encouraging others. Jesus said this when he was tested. Remember when he was tested? And I preached about this a few weeks ago. Great, when he was asked what the greatest commandment was, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest command. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. When you love others like yourself, the last thing you ever are going to want to do is to gossip about somebody. Gossip was designed by Satan to hurt others. Instead, what we're called to do is we're called to express and to show the loving power of Jesus Christ. The loving power of Jesus Christ should move us to lift others up. Let yourself be an extension of Jesus Christ to others. And I just I want to finish with this. We should always be willing and ready to encourage to lift others up, to love others with the love of Jesus Christ. We should be ready 24 hours a day to extend the love of Jesus Christ to others. That we should let him work through our lives to the benefit of others. Because as Christians, there's nothing more powerful than having a lot of encouraged Christians working together to serve God. And the last thing we ever want to do is disgrace somebody or hurt somebody. Because that's not what God commissioned us to do. We're to encourage, to spur one another on, and to always pray for each other. Amen. Amen. And if we could, if our prayer team could come up during this time, if you have something on your heart, if you'd like to be prayed for or pray with somebody, please come up during this time. Or if the Lord has put it on your heart to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, feel free to come up uh, and be baptized this morning. I come to the garden alone
godly love and knowledge. And I pray that we go outside the doors and we share this with people in our community. Lord, I pray that you use us to seek and to save the lost, as well as to lift others up. And Father, we want to pray for those who are struggling today and those that are going through things. Use us to help comfort and bless others, Lord. Lord, we also want to pray for those that serve in government positions. We want to pray for our teachers and our students. Lord, we want to pray for all those who are going through things. Pray for our men and women in the military and the first responders. Above all things, Lord, we want to pray for all people all the time. Father, thank you for blessing us and loving us and giving us all that we have received from your Son, Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.